What's up, comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics. Last time you saw me, I was dressed as a clown, humbling myself before you, talking about my biggest financial fails of the year. Some of you wanted to know if I've done anything right, so here's a video showing you that I'm not a complete idiot. I'm excited to announce that the 40 thousand subscriber giveaway is going to be pretty epic. I'm going to be buying one of you a 9.8 with white pages of either the first Gwen Stacy, Miles Morales, or Laura Kinney. You decide, but make sure you're commenting on every video, like every single one, and subscribe. It could be you. Okay, so the first financial investment that really paid off for me this year was expanding to the biggest room at the antique shop. When we started, I was way in the back. I didn't even have the full room. I upgraded to that full room, but it was still too small. Now I finally have something that I think I can be proud of. Initially, the antique shop, as I was calling it, was essentially just glorified storage. It was like paying for my rent. Some months it wasn't even paying for my rent. Since I got the big room, I have tripled what I've been doing every single month, and that place is now finally turning a profit, which is really great. Not only that, but I'm trying to get another room for just dollar bin diving. Well, I think that would be really cool, so that's something I got in the works right now. The second investment that really paid off was my personal copy of an X-Men 141. I've had a perfect raw copy for a couple years now. I don't hold on to much books, but I'm a huge Days of Future Past fan. It's actually my favorite X-Men movie. And X-Men 97 kind of boosted an X-Men fan base within me. Anyway, I finally decided to send it in because there was a Claremont signing. I had him remark it and sign it. And honestly, I wasn't really caring what the grade was gonna be. I kind of had a feeling it was gonna be the perfect grade, but it did get a 9.8. There were no problems with the book, no spine ticks, nothing. So I was very happy to see it. But I haven't been watching the value of that book. I assumed it was like several hundred. Uh, a signed Newsy with custom label is actually about 15, 1600 bucks. Honestly, that's pretty amazing. I don't even remember what I paid for the initial raw book. It was so long ago. So I think that's a pretty fantastic investment. Glad I held on to it for so long. Next investment that went really well is the perfect collection number one. The very beginning of the year, I was buying a couple collections, but one in particular, the guy had three or four short boxes that got shipped to my house, and he described things as near mint, but quite frankly, I hear that a lot. Usually people just say their collections are all near mint, but they're really like very fine. They were mint. <laughs> Not only that, every single book came in Mylar, so I didn't have to do any rebagging and boarding. But it was such a small collection that I decided, let's send some of this off to CGC. About 75% of everything I sent from that collection got 9.8s, as well as just some others that got amazing grades. The lowest grade I got was a Crow number one, got a 9.2. That's still pretty good, man. He even mentioned that back in the day, he was a stickler. He would return comics to his comic shops that had any small imperfections and demand perfect copies in return. Well, turns out, yeah, this collection was actually near mint to mint. Had I just kept it raw, I think I would have done okay, but I really milked it and I sent things off to get graded and I think that was a really smart move for that particular collection. It was a risk that paid off. Next is starting a TikTok. Yeah, I actually technically started this in 2023, but 2024 is when I really started using it. And this thing has really brought a lot of growth to the channel through TikTok, but also through the YouTube shorts. I've started doing these comic book fun facts. And it was just like a fun thing for me to do other than my typical videos. I have loved doing them. Everyone seems to really dig them too. So it's just been this super fun thing. And each one of these TikToks seems to bring in another two to about 10 subscribers per video. So it's really helped the growth of this channel to a degree that I really did not intend. That ended up being a really awesome thing for this channel as a whole. And I also get to reach a younger generation, which is really cool. Next up is Daredevil 168. I'm a big Daredevil fan, probably up there in my top five with Marvel. 
but I'm a volume one type of guy for sure, and I love Elektra. I think she's one of the best villain anti-heroes out there. I played a big risk. Now, you saw in the other video, usually big risks this year aren't working out, but I sent it to the Frank Miller signing, and it kept the 9.8 on that one, which actually ended up being a close to $3,000 book. I ended up buying the perfect collection number two, a month ago, and I used this book as a bargaining chip, which took quite a bit off the total. And while I only had it for a short time, it ended up being an amazing part of a trade that got me an even better collection. Next is the Green Lantern signed collection. I bought this at the beginning of the year. Once again, another three to four short box collection. This guy must have spent 10 years going to Comic-Cons, and he got every single book signed, double, triple, quadruple signed. It was crazy. And honestly, I thought it was such a niche collection, a niche buy, that I was worried the books were going to sit forever. I was actually worried that it was a bad buy when I got it. Nope. I did a claim sale, advertised the fact that I had some signed Green Lantern books. Everybody showed up, and almost every single book sold that day. I had nothing to be worried about. That stuff flew off the shelf, and then eventually the stuff that was remaining did finally sell. That definitely ended up being a good purchase that has helped me get some of these other collections. Granted, I definitely wish I kept some of them because CGC now authenticates signatures. Would have been good to hold on to some of them, but that's okay. Next was the perfect submission. I can probably count on one hand how many perfect submissions I've had, which means every single book gets a 9.8. It's extraordinarily rare. Those of you who have submitted books to whatever grading company, uh, it's not easy, especially for books from the 80s. This was a purchase of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collection. Now, what was interesting is all the slabs from this guy were like 8s and 8.5s, eight some 9s, but his rawls that were ungraded looked perfect. So I was kind of thinking like maybe he should have got them graded. I took it upon myself. Dude, every book got the 9.8. So... If you don't know, TMNT from Volume 1 is full of some nice keys and also some nice value. So that ended up really plugging the holes from a lot of the fails that you saw in the earlier video this week. I might have lost thousands of dollars with some bad investments this year, but this and a couple others have really done a good job of plugging those holes. Next was the $5 collection. So I had an opportunity to buy a collection at only $5 a book. And this gentleman reached out to me. He actually only offers this to dealers, but he only does this quite rarely. Obviously, you better believe I jumped at that. Only one short box worth of stuff, but everything was bought for $5. I think that was the fastest two grand I ever made. So shout out to Mike, you are the sweetest. He wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of money put back in my pocket, and I'm happy to say that it worked, and it worked pretty much immediately. So thanks again, and I'm dropping the video for you if you guys wanna check that out. Next is the perfect collection number two. I recently went to Bayonne, New Jersey, and got myself a hundred long boxes. And just like perfect collection number one, this guy must have also been a stickler. I have had so much fun doing the sorting of this. I'm actually not even done. Mini series, maxi series, and all these full runs, getting all these original owner, one-time owner books into the hands of you collectors has been a blast. By the way, check out my eBay page because I am going to be dropping a bunch more full runs this week. But just like Perfect Collection number one, there's a lot of great contenders in this collection. My only regret is that I didn't send off more. I've already sold off some of the keys at some claim sales, but I definitely wish some more things went out to get graded because it's starting to come back from CGC and it's been 9.8 city on some pretty good books. Definitely my best buy of 2024, but it is a top five buy from me of all time. And the thing is, there weren't even huge books, but the overwhelming majority of it was just so nicely organized, well put together, and 90% of the collection was at least a 9.4. Most of it, 960 and 980. 
it was an incredible sharp collection. And to get that many books in that high of a grade is something you just rarely see. The final investment I made, and I think my best investment of the year, is getting back into reading. Yes, this is not a financial, but a personal investment. In 2023, I turned on my Mr. Businessman. I kind of let things go in terms of reading. And my soul was definitely missing something. This year, I've carved out some time to make sure I read some stuff. Off the rack, I know new books are expensive, but this is what it's about, man. Go to your comic book shop, pick up some of the new reads. Void Rivals, Rook Exodus, Local Man. With DC, you got World's Finest. Superman's actually pretty good. Marvel's got Ultimate Spider-Man. The Ultimate's Black Panthers. There's lots of good stuff right now. I've also heard Transformers is really good right now, and I've heard that Blue Beetle is really good right now. So I'm excited to add those to my pull list. If you are just a collector, I'm not going to tell you how to do your collecting, but I do recommend carve some time for new stuff. Image is killing it. I said it in 2021. Here it's 2024. I'm saying it again. I think the 2020s are going to be remembered as like a golden age with Image Comics. Starting reading again gave me that kid-like feeling that I really needed and a little bit of that return to positivity. It's true that a lot of my fails from this year definitely are keeping me down, probably not as profitable as I want to be for the second year of my business, but I feel good and everybody's healthy. I'm enjoying my reading. I'm enjoying my time at the antique shop. I've got a good flow going on and I'm just happy to be doing it all. And that's all you can ask for. So I will see you at the next video. Keep on hunting. Do not gatekeep how people collect or read. Don't forget to collect what you love. Like and subscribe on your way out. See you at the next video. Make sure to come on down to Sentiment Depot's Antiques and Collectibles located at 238 West Delaware Ave in Pennington, New Jersey. Find so many great books for just a dollar and the lowest prices on key comics around. Enjoy a huge selection of graded comics priced up to 20% lower than current fair market value. We are open from Wednesday to Sunday, closed Monday, Tuesday. You got a collection you want to sell? Bring that too. Can't wait to see you there.